kickers. I'm going to ask you about kickers. They, they don't get a whole lot of noise at the combine, really until last year when the Bucks traded up to get Roberto Aguayo, and then he goes out and is dead last in field goal percentage in the NFL. That drew some attention. These guys don't go get run through the ringer like usual NBA, uh, NFL draft prospects. Why is that, and should they go through more of a, an arduous process? You know, I'm actually working on a story on this, and I think that it's actually the hardest position to evaluate at the combine. The kickers come in, there's only four of them this year, and they basically kick 14 to 20 times and do interviews with the teams. And at the place where we measure everything that you can possibly measure, we can't measure the one thing that really matters to kickers, which is their brains. And, you know, I think we saw even with Aguayo last year, when you go in the second round and you have those kinds of expectations, you end up, uh, you know, getting inside your own head. You know, so much of kicking is mental, and so much of it comes down to, like, how can you handle a pressure situation? And yet these teams that evaluate everything else, they can't necessarily evaluate that when their seasons and games and quarters will come down to that. Okay, is so there that, a certain, yeah. well, I'm curious on that, when you mentioned performing under pressure, is there certain questions that teams ask positional players that get, they can get a read on how this player will react under certain high pressure situations? Well, I think, yeah, one thing they do is look at when they had kicks like that in college. You know, it could be even be at the end of the half. It could be after they missed a kick. And how did they respond the next time they went through a kick? It could be uh, game winners, that kind of thing. I did talk to some sports psychologists that feel like the evaluation process could be better. And what they would do is run them through scenarios where the idea is to show them missed kicks, times when a kicker really fails, mm -hmm. and see how they, their body language reacts to that. They said that uh, when you feel that situation, you can, you can kind of show how you'll react to it in the game. You see if they get sweaty, do they get nervous? Are they worried? And then you can sort of evaluate how they might handle the real thing. It's funny because it doesn't just happen with the rookies, though. Like we've seen with Blair Walsh had a little bit of a hangover after he missed that important kick, obviously, for the Vikings two seasons ago. Even Steven Gostowski, I mean, he had a pretty bad year for him, considering he's one of the best kickers because of a missed kick that he had two years ago in a, in a championship game. I mean, it's so mental. Sebastian Janikowski got taken in the first round. He seemed to be okay. Roberto Aguayo gets taken in the second round. He's a mess, at least for the first half of the season. Should you ever or a team ever draft a kicker at all? Why not just sign them as free agents and completely take the pressure off? I agree with that 100% because the, the common thread between all those kickers that you just mentioned is they missed very important kicks and it carried over into their next season or the season after that. I think you can find a kicker who went to Georgia State and, you know, sign him and give him the same sort of tryout. Plus, there are always kickers kind of kicking around on the, on the waiver wire that no you can bring intended. in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you.